It was an ordinary day at the upscale boutique. The staff moved briskly among racks of luxury apparel, maintaining a polished facade that concealed something troubling beneath the surface. The store prided itself on high-end fashion and exemplary service, but an unspoken bias lingered, a shadow that only a handful noticed but no one dared address. That silence was about to be broken. Isaac Moore, the pioneering CEO who built his fashion empire from scratch, had a reputation for fairness, innovation, and unwavering leadership. However, rumors had reached him, whispers about biased treatment that emerged whenever customers of a certain background visited his stores. The reports were infrequent, but consistent enough to capture Isaac's attention, compelling him to take action. Isaac knew that if he appeared in the store as himself, the staff would maintain perfect decorum. They respected him, or at least feared his position as their employer. To uncover the truth, Isaac needed to experience the environment firsthand, incognito. A plan began to form. With the help of a skilled makeup artist, Isaac altered his appearance drastically. His skin tone changed, a wig masked his usual well-groomed hairstyle, and his typically sophisticated wardrobe was replaced by simple, casual attire. Staring into the mirror, he barely recognized the person reflected back at him. He was ready to put his strategy into motion. Isaac entered the boutique as an unremarkable shopper. No employee gave him the welcoming nods or courteous smiles the store was known for. At first, nothing seemed out of place. He sifted through garments, waiting for someone to approach him. Soon, however, the subtle change in atmosphere became undeniable. A sales associate nearby, a man named Mark, cast a sidelong glance at him filled with silent judgment before turning away. When Isaac finally requested assistance, the coldness was palpable. Mark approached with a sigh and an air of impatience. Can I help you? He muttered, his voice devoid of the typical warmth. Isaac asked if they carried a particular jacket in a different size, only to receive a dismissive reply. That's out of your budget. You might want to check the clearance rack instead. The sting of the comment cut through Isaac, not because of the insult itself, but because of the assumptions and contempt behind it. He continued his undercover exploration throughout the store, met with indifference, veiled disdain, and reluctant service. When he reached the cashier, a young woman named Clara avoided touching his hand as she processed the transaction, her face carefully blank. It wasn't just one person, nor a single event. Every interaction bore the same undertone, reflecting an ingrained prejudice that poisoned the store's ethos. The employees had no clue that the customer they disrespected was their CEO. Isaac returned home, shedding the makeup and changing back into his signature attire. The reality he had just witnessed weighed heavily on him. The following morning, he strode into the boutique, sharply dressed and carrying an air of quiet determination. The staff perked up, standing a little taller as they greeted him with nervous politeness. Everyone to the break room, now, Isaac announced. The employees exchanged uneasy glances, but obeyed. Mark fidgeted while Clara glanced nervously at her colleagues, sensing the tension. I need to address something serious, Isaac said, his voice steady but charged. Yesterday, I visited this store, not as your boss, but as an ordinary shopper. Confused murmurs filled the room. Mark shifted uncomfortably. Clara's eyes widened. I came disguised, Isaac continued, and what I experienced was both eye-opening and deeply disappointing. The room fell silent as Isaac recounted the events of the previous day. The dismissive tones, the avoidance, the clear biases woven into every encounter. I'm not just disappointed, he said, his tone lowering to a more solemn pitch. I'm furious that such behavior exists in a place that's supposed to represent integrity and respect. The employees' expressions varied from shocked to ashamed. Mark swallowed hard, and Clara's face flushed with embarrassment. And here's what's going to happen, Isaac said, a hint of resolve sharpening his voice. Starting tomorrow, you'll each undergo the same experience I did. You'll be transformed and sent to establishments where you'll encounter the treatment you've been inflicting on others. A wave of unease swept through the group. No one dared protest, but fear was evident in their eyes. The next day, Isaac's plan unfolded. 
Each employee was given a complete transformation, mimicking what he had experienced. They entered stores and restaurants with Isaac observing, facing the same cold stares, dismissive tones, and discriminatory assumptions. Mark's confident facade crumbled as he was ignored by salespeople. Clara's hands shook after being seated in an overlooked corner of a cafe. By evening, they returned to the boutique, visibly changed. Mark's bravado was gone, replaced by a haunted look. Clara's eyes brimmed with unshed tears. Isaac gathered them once more. Now you understand, he said softly. This is the pain, the humiliation, the frustration you've unknowingly perpetuated. And it ends now. Mark stepped forward, voice trembling. I'm so sorry, Mr. Moore. I had no idea. It's not enough to apologize, Isaac replied, his expression softening slightly. You must change, and I will be here to guide you. With that, the tone in the store shifted. A lesson had been learned not just in words, but through lived experience, one that would reshape the boutique's culture from that day forward. From that pivotal day onward, the boutique transformed. Isaac rolled out new training programs that focused on empathy, respect, and the foundational principle that every customer deserved to be treated with dignity, regardless of their background. But he wasn't content to limit the changes to his own store. He insisted that his employees extend their newfound understanding beyond those walls. Weekly, after closing hours, they partnered with local community groups to identify other businesses exhibiting similar biases. Collaborations with legal advisors, civic leaders, and community advocates became part of their routine as they sought to challenge discrimination wherever it surfaced. The road was long, but the change was tangible. Under Isaac's mentorship, the employees evolved. They began to see themselves as not just retail workers, but advocates for fairness and equality. What had started as an internal transformation blossomed into a movement. Each week after their shifts, they met to discuss potential locations to visit, shops, cafes, and service centers rumored to discriminate against certain customers. The task was often met with resistance. Some proprietors denied any wrongdoing. Others reacted defensively. But Isaac and his now-enlightened staff possessed an edge, first-hand experience, and empathy. When they entered these spaces, they initiated conversations that were often uncomfortable but crucial. They spoke from the heart, drawing on the sting of their own encounters during Isaac's undercover mission. Gradually, this sincerity resonated. They weren't there to accuse, but to reveal and inspire change. One late evening, Isaac convened his team for one of their routine debriefings. The camaraderie in the room was palpable, forged through shared experiences and a mutual commitment to justice. Mark, who had initially resisted these efforts, cleared his throat to speak. Today, I visited that diner we've heard so much about. The one reported for turning away certain customers. He started his voice layered with newfound humility. At first, the owner was defensive, unwilling to listen. But I kept explaining, telling him what it felt like when you're judged before you even say a word. After a while, he paused, really paused, and I saw a shift in his eyes. He admitted he hadn't understood how damaging his behavior was. The room absorbed Mark's words in a thoughtful silence, one filled not with regret, but with hope. This was their goal, not only to confront, but to enlighten one conversation at a time. Over the following months, they pushed forward. Each visit, each discussion, sowed seeds of change. More businesses began altering their approaches, influenced by the stories shared by Isaac's team. Community members who heard about these efforts joined in, creating a ripple effect that slowly swept through the neighborhood. One evening, as Isaac sat reviewing reports, he felt a rare moment of contentment. The results were more than he had dared hope for. Stores had revised their customer service policies, discriminatory signs had been removed, and employees had attended workshops on diversity and inclusion. But Isaac knew that these victories, though significant, were only the start of a larger mission. The issue extended far beyond their local community, and real, lasting change required continuous effort. At a team meeting one afternoon, Isaac addressed the employees who now looked to him not just as a boss, but as a mentor. We've made progress, he said, his voice steady and hopeful. But this is just the beginning. We've shown that change can happen here, 
but we know that our town is just a small part of a much bigger world. Prejudice still exists, and there are places we haven't touched yet. But we've proven one thing. It can be done. A sense of resolve passed through the room as the employees exchanged determined glances. The journey was daunting, but the potential for impact pushed them forward. Isaac paused, letting the moment resonate. We may not change everything overnight, but step by step, conversation by conversation, we can spread this movement. And one day, we might look back and see how far these small ripples have traveled. The team understood the scale of what lay ahead, but their spirits were bolstered by what they had already accomplished. They were prepared for the next chapter. Over the years, the influence of Isaac's mission extended beyond their city limits. Word of their transformative efforts reached neighboring towns and eventually larger cities. Businesses that heard of their story reached out, asking for advice on replicating their practices. Some even requested to undergo similar immersive experiences, eager to understand the nuances of prejudice so they could address it within their own establishments. Isaac's store evolved into more than just a place to shop. It became a beacon of progress, a symbol of what was possible when people committed to change. Employees who once hadn't recognized their biases became champions for justice, speaking at local events, leading training sessions, and sharing their experiences to inspire others. Years later, standing by the window of his office, Isaac took in the vibrant city that had transformed alongside them. There was still work to do, pockets of discrimination lingered, and new challenges arose. Yet, he was confident that the seeds they had sown would continue to take root, growing with each new generation. During a gathering with the team, now veterans of the cause, Mark stepped forward. His voice carried a mix of pride and reflection. We've come so far, he said, and we'll keep going because we've learned that real change doesn't end. It's a commitment for life. But thanks to you, Isaac, we know what's possible. Isaac smiled, a rare softness in his eyes. Together, we've made a difference, he said, and we'll keep pushing forward one step at a time. The future remained uncertain, but they had discovered the power of perseverance and empathy. Sometimes that was enough to light the way forward. 